joining us in our Bible study. I want to get into the Word of God. and uh, We had talked about the rapture, so I wanted to kind of touch on that subject a little bit on the rapture. Um, and uh, we know it, the word rapture is not, it's not in the Bible. We get that from the Latin word. I've said that before. But what is the rapture? The rapture, it, it, it means the definition is to be taken away, to be removed. And that's what's going to happen to the church. Uh, so I wanted to make put emphasis on the on the church. The church is very powerful. Uh, the church began to uh, arise in in the Book of Acts, and uh, when Jesus told the disciples and the followers, he said, "Wait, uh, wait in the upper room and pray, and wait for the Comforter to come. Wait for the Holy Spirit to come." And we we know that in Acts chapter two, the Bible talks about that a, a, a wind came into that room and, and touched everybody that was in that upper room praying. And the Bible says that they began to speak in tongues and other tongues as the Holy Spirit enabled them. And they were baptized with the Holy Spirit. So uh, the church is very, very powerful. Once you have a church that begins to pray, a church that begins to fast, a church begins to move in the Spirit of God, uh, the church is very, very powerful. And one thing that the devil hates uh, is a church that is on fire for God. A church that uh, uh, doesn't, doesn't uh, uh, dabble with sin and sin of the church. And I want to touch on that a little bit uh, this morning because we, we feel that, that just because we are Christians and we're in church, that it gives us a license to do whatever we want to do, and that's not the case. So if you have your Bibles, and I'm still uh, talking about the rapture, and we're talking about end times, but I believe that the end times has a lot to do with our lives too. Uh, our lives have to be right before God. We can't just do what we want to do and, and feel that, that either uh, God is going to accept us or not. If He doesn't, that's fine. And that's not just the case. Uh, a church that's on fire for God, a church that moves in the Spirit of God, is a church that has dedicated themselves to the Lord Jesus Christ, a, a, a dedication, if you will, a dedication. They surrendered all their lives unto the Lord, and that's so important. So we find that in Acts chapter 2, where they began to seek the presence of God, and they began to pray, and they began to pray for a movement of God. And we see throughout history that when people get together, begin to pray for a move of God, that God answers and sends His presence into this world uh, to save people, to heal. Uh, what good is it? And I'm not, I'm not saying that healing is not good. That's not what I'm saying. But uh, what good is it if a person gets healed, but they never uh, give the lives to Jesus Christ? It's, in, in other words, what I'm saying is best for that person to be healed in their spirit, for that person to, to, to have a change of heart, a, a change of spirit, uh, so that's what I, I want to focus on this morning. I want to focus on that today. And, and so in, if you have your Bibles in Ephesians, we're going to go to the book of Ephesians. And it, it's so important to understand that the church is very powerful. In the book of Matthew, it says, uh, what good is it if the salt uh, it, it has lost its savor, has lost its preservativeness, has lost its effectiveness, then it's not, it's not good for anything. See, uh, your food tastes better with salt in it, and uh, you can attest attest to, to to that. And you know sometimes they say, well, the doctor tells you you can't eat salt. You you, you can't. You got to stay away from this. You got to stay from that. And just eliminating salt begins to change the flavor of that food. So salt gives the the food taste. And so Jesus says in the book of Matthew, if the salt is is removed, then it is it is not good for anything. It also says that a light that is hidden, be, uh, uh, a light that is in the house that is hidden, uh, is not visible, is not good to be used for anything. A light is very important, especially when it comes to darkness. When there is darkness in the room, and when you light, you turn on the candle, you turn on the light switch, and light comes onto the room, it, it illuminates everything that is in that, in that room, and it's so important. So what is darkness? Darkness is the absence of light. Darkness is the absence of, of light. Where there is no light, there is darkness. 
And we see that from the very beginning that Satan always wanted to bring havoc on the plans of God. God created Adam and Eve and Satan went in there and to, uh, began to work with Eve and, and eventually uh, began to work with Adam, you know, through Eve to the, the, destroy the plan that God had for mankind. And uh, he was able to bring lies and he brought confusion. Uh, Satan has always been like that from the very beginning. Satan, the Bible says in the book of Ezekiel that he wanted to overthrow God in the book of Isaiah. He wanted to overthrow God and he wanted to be as God, wanted to be worship of God. So Satan and his followers always wanted that glory, always wanted that, that worship. Uh, Satan has always wanted to be as God. And, uh, and, and, and God said, you can't sit on my throne. I created you. How can you overthrow the, the, the creator? How can uh, creation overthrow the creator? There's no way, no way, no way possible. So we see in the Word of God from the very beginning that Satan has always wanted to destroy the works of God. When God would rise up a man, Satan would also try to bring his own and destroy the works of God. That's why we had read uh, last week in the book of Revelation chapter 13, the number 666. The number 666 stands for the Antichrist, where the perfect number of God is 7. Uh, 777 is the perfect number of God, the number 7. So uh, we have three in the Trinity of God. We have God, we have Jesus, and we have the Holy Ghost. And Satan also has a Trinity. It's Satan, the Antichrist, and the false prophet, the three. He always imitates everything that God has. It, he imitates that. Uh, there are tongues that are given by the Holy Spirit. There are also demonic tongues. If you've never studied that, I encourage you to look into that. Uh, we always see that he is a copycat. Everything that God does, he copies. He copies what God does and, and uses it for, for evil. So when there is darkness, uh, the, where there is darkness, there's always evil. Uh, there's always uh, darkness. There's always sin. There's always uh, demonic things that are going on. But when light comes in and hits darkness... Darkness always flees because darkness cannot be in the in the presence of God. Uh, I've had experiences where uh, there's there's people that are not serving God, and you come into a room, and and when you step into that room, it changes the whole atmosphere. It changes uh, that that atmosphere it changes everything, you know, because there is darkness that is there, and people feel uncomfortable. And people will begin to leave, say, I, oh, I, I, I have something else to do, I, you know, I can't, I can't. Uh, something came up. And you notice that they, they're quickly, they're, uh, you know, get up and grab their, their, their things and, and they leave because they cannot be in the presence of God. So we're talking about the rapture. When the church is going to be removed, uh, the light of God that is upon this earth is going to be removed, the salt is going to be removed. That's why the church is very important. Why do you think America is blessed? Because it, it, it was founded on the foundation of the Word of God. It was founded on the principles of God. Why do you think America is blessed? Because there's people that are called by the name of God. You know, the, the companies and, and, and schools and all these places are blessed because you work there. You know, the, the, the things that, the, 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 all these places, you know, they might say, well, we're making good choices. Well, that might be the case, but in reality, your business and your, your, wherever you work at is being blessed because there's people that are gathering together and they're people of God. It's such a blessing. I, I, was, I was on YouTube the other day and, and I saw where people are getting together at coffee shops and, and they're in a, in a big table and they're gathering together to, to worship God and, and to, you know, taking out their Bibles and, 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 and studying the Word of God. That's so beautiful. It's, 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 it's uplifting to me to see things like that. And what a beautiful thing when people get together and, and, uh, and, and study the Word of God and at their work, at their school, wherever it may be. It is such a blessing. What is happening is that light is invading darkness and people are hearing the message of God. And when they hear the message of God, there's like a light that turns on. And it's like a turning on a lamp. It changes from darkness into the light. So 
Let, let's get into the book and the Word of God. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 5. And I'm going to begin on verse 8. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 8. And I want to focus on light and darkness. Uh, that there's a difference that is there. That's why uh, the Antichrist hasn't been revealed. That's why uh, the tribulation hasn't begun. Because the church is still here. Once the church is removed in the rapture, when the church is removed and uh, the rapture is the church will be taken away. And can you imagine Christians uh, in airplanes, Christians in working in hospitals, Christians, whatever it may be. And when the trumpet of God sounds, every Christian will vanish. The Bible says every Christian will, will, will disappear, will vanish. And we know according to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 that there will be change in a twinkling of an eye. The dead in Christ will rise up and then those that remain shall be changed in a twinkling of an eye. That, flat, that fast and we will be, we'll meet the Lord in the air. And so every Christian born again, saved by the blood of the Lamb, will be saved and will be gone from this earth. And when the rapture happens, the church, the body of Christ, the bride of Christ, will be removed from the earth when it does the tribulation will begin so ephesians chapter 5 and the word of god ephesians chapter 5 and i'm going to begin on verse 8 if you have your bibles ephesians chapter 5 and i'm going to begin on verse 8 the bible begins to say says for you were once in darkness but now you are the light in the world uh, uh, you're the light in the Lord. So for it says you were once you were once in darkness, not that uh, you were a, a part of darkness, but it says no, you were in darkness. You uh, you once uh, were in darkness. In other words, you lived in the dominion of darkness. Isn't that something? You lived in the dominion of darkness, but now if you if you see that where it says but now. You are the light in the Lord. You are the light. You have darkness. and you. So according to Scripture, you, the Bible says that we are to please the Lord, to find out what pleases the Lord. You know exactly what pleases your wife. You know exactly what pleases your husband, what pleases your, your children. You know, when uh, the children were little and we had a surprise for them, uh, I, I remember, you know, we wouldn't tell them where we were going or what we were about to do. Uh, it was always a surprise. We always liked, I like to always surprise them and uh, always like to, you know, see their faces and as their smiles and their laughter. You know, the same thing with, with, uh, with your wife or your husband. You know, uh, you know, my wife likes to go and eat Olive Garden, you know, and I like certain things. I like uh, to go fishing and uh, play golf and all these other things that I like to do so she knows what I like and I know what she likes you know going you know and women like to go shopping and get their nails done and get their hair done and uh, get their uh, the pedicures done so those are things that they like and you know what pleases them you know husband sometimes you know cleaning around the house and doing the dishes and vacuuming you know we, we do it because we want to please our wives uh, so the Bible says, find out what pleases the Lord. You know, and it's not hard pleasing God. So what what pleases the Lord? Well, look what the next scripture says. It says, have nothing, have nothing to do with fruitless deeds of darkness. Notice that it, it emphasizes the word deeds. I want to put emphasis on the word deeds. It says, have nothing to do with fruitless deeds of darkness. You have no business, you know, with all the co-workers talking dirty and listening to dirty jokes, you have, you have to excuse yourself. You know what? I, I, I can't. Uh, I, I, I can't hear that, and and remove yourself from that situation, because if you don't, then you're partaking and you're telling them, "Oh, it's okay." You know, you know. Yes, I go to church, and yes, I'm a Christian, but uh, it's okay. No, and it's it's not okay. You know, we should be able to remove themselves. You know, you can't change the person from telling that joke. They want to tell that joke. That's fine, but I excuse myself or they want to continue to curse, or do whatever they want to do. You know, only the Spirit of God, only God can change that heart. Only God can change that person. But you can excuse yourself and say, you know what, I don't want to partake from that. I don't want to do things like that. You know, and so the Bible says, find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. 
It says, for it is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret. Remember, I told you a little bit earlier that uh, our lives as Christians is so important because we are a testimony. The Apostle Paul says in the scriptures that we are an open letter to be read by everyone. You know, whether you know it or not, people uh, um, come to a conclusion by the way that we're living for God. You know, they make a determination, well, I guess all Christians are like that. You know, or, uh, you know, if one Christian is like that, you know, I guess all of them are like that. And we know that's not true, but the Bible says that we're open letters to be read by everyone. So it's important for us to under understand that, you know, we need to be honest, that we need to be uh, faithful in whatever we do, you know, and in, 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 in going to church, attending church, going to church when we're supposed to. You know, I remember, you know, uh, we, we got saved, my wife and I, uh, we got saved at Santo for Christ Church. And we had church on Sunday morning, we had church on Sunday night. Uh, Mondays we had men's Bible study or the women's Bible study. On Wednesday we had church again. Friday we had church again. Saturday we had prayer. Uh, you know, we would get together for prayer. And then Sunday morning we would, we would begin again, you know, Sunday morning, Sunday night. You know, sometimes every first of the... Uh, 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 Saturday of the month, I think on Friday, I'm sorry, every fr first Friday of the month, you know, we had vigil. We would go in there and we would get praying from 12 midnight and, you know, we would last until the morning seeking the presence of God. And sometimes people don't want to go to church. They think that Sunday, one, going to church one time out of the, out of the, out of the week is, is good enough. You know, God is pleased with that. And to be honest with you, you know, we should be there every time the church doors are open. You know, and, and sometimes we should, you know, help out the pastor and being able to clean the church or do whatever needs to be done, you know, and uh, because we want to find out what pleases God. That's so important, you know, and so uh, it is the Bible says that it's shameful even to mention what disobedience to do in secret. What does that mean? What I'm talking about is if you're a, 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 a person that brings praise and worship to the Lord and you're a person that, that plays an instrument, you know, you have no business going to bars. You have no business being in places that you shouldn't be because uh, you're ministering in, in its, you're ministering in holiness. What does that mean? What I'm saying is we're trying to bring presence, hold the holy presence into the presence of God. You know, the, the Bible says in the book of Psalms, who can ascend to my, uh, to my mountain? The only those that have clean hands and a clean heart. You know, and, and we think, well, I'm saved and I can do whatever I want to do. I still want to drink. I still want to smoke. I still want to do drugs. I still want to do pot. I want to do all these things. And I still want to serve God. I'm sorry, you can't. You know, we serve a holy God. And we need to find out what pleases the Lord. And uh, sometimes the only reason why you can't get away from those things is because you're you're being selfish. And God says that uh, if we are self, if, if we are only trying to please ourselves, being selfish, when you're trying to please yourself, then you already received your reward. You're only blessing yourself. And so, so that's why, uh, you know, there's a time that is coming. And, and, and it says in the book of, of Matthew 25, if I'm not mistaken, that he will separate the goats and the lamb. Why goats? Because goats are very stubborn. Goats want to do what they want to do. And, uh, you know, that's why it's sorry. It, I'm sorry to say this, but that's why, you know, we get people that, go church hopping. They jump from one church to another church to another church because they get angry with the pastor. The pastor preaches a hard message or or corrects them. And they say, well, you know what? Uh, my family and I are going. You know why I'm saying this? Because we had it in our ministry where people would say, you know, you're too tough. You're too strict. And uh, they would pick up their stuff and say, you know what? I'm out of here. See you later. And they would move on to another church. And, and that church that they go to uh, that church says, well, praise God, we're, we're growing. But in reality, you're only getting the people that were at another church and they were goats. And now you have goats in your church. Uh, and, and it's so important for us to understand that that's why we need, we need to go into the highways and byways and find people that need a change of God, that need a change of heart. And we began to train those people. It's very hard uh, there's a saying that out there that says it's hard to teach an old dog new tricks. And in reality, there's people that are in church that don't want to change. Um, 
They get angry because you play the, uh, the wrong music. They get angry because you preach too long. They get angry because you, 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 you don't teach enough about love and forgiveness. They don't want to hear about hell. They don't want to hear about uh, living right for God. They, they want you to omit all those things. And they just want to go to church that is about love and kindness and, and righteousness. And it's all about love. Uh, I believe it would be different if we walked with Jesus. When Jesus walked the earth, uh, Jesus was a, was, was a man of love, but he also was a man of correction. Because he wanted to teach his disciples the right way and to do what was right. And, and, and I applaud those churches that are doing this, that are not uh, kneeling down and, 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 and bowing down to, to, to the people. You know, we've had people say, well, if, if you don't do this, I'm going to uh, leave the church and take my tithe with you with me and well that's fine but we need to do what God has called us to do because it is God that uh, is the one that's going to prosper us and not the people so the Bible says this for it is shameful even to mention what is disobedient to do in secret but in everything exposed by light becomes visible and you know that uh, you know when light hits something it is visible uh, when light uh, comes and, and, and it exposes everything you know uh, you know you look in the mirror, you know, and you know when you're in your 20s, and you know you, you look in the mirror, and you don't see any wrinkles, you don't see any lines, and as you get older, and I'm telling you this by experience, as you get older, you begin to look in the mirror, you begin to see the lines and the wrinkles and all this, you begin to see age spots coming on, because the light exposes those things, and uh, the light of God exposes our hearts. What does that mean? What I'm saying is that sometimes there's something in our heart that God wants to deal with and we don't want to release it. We don't want to give it to God. We hide it and, and we put it in a treasure box and we put it in the chest and we don't let the Lord, the Lord wants to come and He wants to uh, reach in there and begin to change our hearts. And we don't allow Him. We don't allow Him to come and penetrate and, and, and change our hearts. You know, we want to continue to live that we are the way that we are living you know, if we have time to go to church, we make time. If not, that's too bad. You know, God understands. No, we need to be faithful. Then we need to put God first in everything. That's why I was saying earlier, you know, if you're a worship leader, if you're a, a, a teacher, a Sunday school teacher, if you're a minister, a pastor, whatever it may be, you know, we have to be careful how we walk because there's other people that are, that are, that are seeing, that are watching, that are looking at what we're looking at when it's very important for us to understand that walk the way that we're supposed to walk so it says it's going to verse 14 says for it is light that makes everything visible that's why it is said wake up O sleeper and rise from the dead and christ will shine on you be very careful then how you live not as unwise but as wise making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil isn't that something it says make a of every opportunity count you don't know if that, that worker that is next to you, you don't know if they're going to be there next week. You don't know if they're going to live for another month. You know, you know and, and we hear people that have died, our relatives or our friends, and, and we say, man, if I only knew, uh, I would have talked to them about Christ. If I only knew that they were going to pass away, if I only knew that they were going to be in that accident, if I only knew... This was going to happen. You know, I would have ministered to them. I would have talked to them about the Lord. Well, that's why the Word of God says, it says, do have, make every opportunity count. Let God, you know, we tell God, God, give me a soul today. Give me someone that I may minister to. Let me bring somebody to the Lord. Let me pray for the sick. Sometimes people say, you know what? I'm going to the situation. Pray for me. And you say, okay, I'll pray for you. No, pray for them right there and then. You know, when uh, I was younger, uh, there was a guy that was going through some things and he needed some prayer. And, uh, and you, know, you know, I worked at Sears and we had these big old elevators that we would put appliances in. And I remember telling him, you know what, uh, let me pray for you. He's giving you an opportunity to make a difference, you know. Uh, how much time God is, is going to give to that person, we don't know. But whatever amount of time... Use that opportunity to speak to them the Word of God. You may have an uncle, you may have an aunt, you may have a cousin that maybe right now uh, they might be in a hospital or uh, they might be at home and not feeling well. You know, 
Get that opportunity to go and minister to them. Go and pray for them. Go and minister to them. Bring them to the Lord Jesus Christ because tomorrow is not promised. We're not promised that we're going to be here for the next week. I'm, I might, you know, I might be gone next week. I may be gone in the next month. But God gives us the opportunity to do the work of God while it is still light. And it's so important, I had said that uh, we have a responsibility to live for God. Isaiah chapter 5 verse 20 says, uh, to be careful, don't call evil what is good, and then what is good, call evil. In other words, let us not make excuses, you know, to, to say, well, you know, I, 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 need, I need to do this. And, and knowing that it's outside of the will of God. You know, uh, we're looking around for husbands and we're looking around for wives. And instead of running to God and let God bring that person that you need into your life. You know, seek first the kingdom of God and all his rights. And then all these things shall be added unto you. Very important. So the Bible says this in, in, in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse uh, 19. So it says... Uh, let me back up, I'm sorry, a little bit. Verse 18 says, Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Speak to one another with psalms and hymns and, sp and spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord, always giving Him thanks to God, the Father, for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Everybody see that? So it says what? Don't get drunk with wine. You know, one one drink changes your 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 reason and changes your understanding. I know because I used to drink way before when I when uh, I, I I knew about the Lord, but I had never given my life to to, to the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, uh, you know, and I think I told you the story that my mom came to know the Lord in 1972, and uh, we went to church. And during those years, going to that church, that Pentecostal church. Never once did I give my life to the Lord. And on occasions, the Spirit of God was so strong in those services, and I could feel that the presence of God wanted to come into my heart, but I would harden my heart, and I didn't let the Spirit of God come in. And sometimes tears, you know, my spirit was sensing the Spirit of God, even though my spirit was not alive yet, but my spirit understood that the Spirit of God and tears would be running down my, my eyes and and I would still harden my heart and I didn't give my life to the Lord. So I understand that, you know, as, as, I, as I began uh, to, uh, I became a teenager and, and I didn't want nothing to do with church anymore. I didn't want to go to church anymore. And so, you know, I got into the clubbing scene, into the drinking scene. And uh, so I understand one drink changes your understanding, changes, changes your reasoning. That's why he says, don't get drunk on wine, but... But, but stay filled with the Spirit of God. That's so important. Now let me go to in, in, in John chapter 8, verse 12. If you don't, you don't have time, uh, that's fine. I'm going to read it. Jesus says in John chapter 8, we're talking about the light of God. Je uh, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. He says, I am that light. Remember that light exposes things. See, when we, when we came to know the Lord Jesus, we saw ourselves in the light of God. We saw ourselves in the light of God. And when we came close to that light, we saw who we were, people of sin, people that needed a Savior, people that needed a change of heart. That's why when we realized that we were sinners, you know, we gave our lives to Jesus. I remember, I mean, I cried, I cried, and God came, Jesus came into my life, into my heart, and He changed and I cry and I cry because I saw myself as a sinner and I was far from God and I repented of my sins and I cried when I got up from my knees and uh, I was a whole different person. I was a different person, uh, completely different. I was no longer the same Gilbert. I was a different person. Let me begin to finish it up. Ephesians chapter 5. So I want to be, go back to the beginning and let me go to verse 1. So how do we move closer to the light of God? And uh, as we're moving into in, in these end times and we're seeing things happen and, and the earthquakes and the famines and all these things that are coming upon the world right now, all I can say is you need to be ready. You need to be ready. You know, the Bible says in, 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 the, in the book of Matthew, as 
lightning comes from the east into the west, so shall the Son of Man come uh, like lightning, like a thief in the night. He will come when he's least expected. That's why be ready. That's why if you're not walking the way you should be walking, then let's get right with God. If you got things in your heart that are that God has been dealing with you and it's already been months and years that you've been carrying, it's time to release them to God. So if I want to walk closer to God, how do I do it? Well, look at Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. It says, Be imitators of God. Be imitators of God, therefore, as dearly loved children, and live a life of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. If you want to walk in the righteousness of God, if you want to walk right, the Bible says, be first, be imitators of God. And look, but look what verse 3 says. Look at verse 3. It says, but among you, there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or any kind of impurity or of greed, because these are improper for God's holy people. Nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking, which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. Isn't that something? It says there shouldn't be any kind of sexual immorality. Why? Because this brings separation between uh, God and yourself. It says because this is improper. You, there, should ne ne or, uh, nor, there's, there should be any obscenity, foolish talk. It says in verse 5, for this you can be sure. Uh, it says in verse 4, it says, nor, uh, I'm sorry, in verse 5 it says, For this you can be sure, no immoral, impure, or greedy person, such a man is an, such as a man is an adulterer, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because such things... God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. It says, therefore, do not be partners with them. Isn't that something? So what does it say? It says, have nothing to do with those. You know, uh, my pastor, when I was in Bible college, gave me some advice. He gave us some advice. He said, whenever you began to see the vision rising up in the church, uh, stay away from it. Get away from it. Don't. Don't, don't gather with, the, with these people that are there to bring the vision. I'm going to tell you one story, and then I'm going to be praying and, and praying, uh, praying for the sick. But I'm going to tell you this one story. Uh, years ago, I was at Sea Island. I went, went my, with my family. I went to Sea Island. And at Sea Island, there was a, a big, long table where people had gathered together, and you could tell there were church people. Uh, but I did notice this one lady that began to speak bad about her pastor about her church and I was this close to uh, to telling her you know that's not right for you to be speaking about the pastor that way or to be bringing the church talking about the church because it is wrong you know the Bible says that we need to be in unity and love we all have faults we all have faults no one in this world is perfect uh, somebody said uh, you know can you tell me where the perfect church is you'll never find it and if you do find it, don't go there because you're going to mess it up. We all have faults. We all fall short of the glory of God. It is by His grace that we are saved. You know, the Bible says, you know, help each other out. If one is lacking in something, help them out. Rise them up. Pray for them. Encourage them. If you have to even exhort them, there's nothing wrong with exhorting them. You know, some people, they don't like to be told what to do or to be corrected. But that's part of being a Christian, is being exhorted in the things of God because they're going to help you grow. The Bible says that iron sharpens iron. You have to let yourself be sharpened by the man of God, by the word of God. It's okay for that pastor to exhort you. So let me finish here. It says, so therefore, do not partner with them. You got people, if you're a music minister and you're in that, in that group of ministers and, and they're doing things that are not right, you need to bring it up to the pastor, expose it so they could be holiness and righteousness in that altar as you're ministering to the people. It's very important to understand that in the Old Testament, 
whenever they use the utensils that belong to God and they use them, uh, you know, you, you know the story of, of, uh, of Belshazzar and all these things where they use the utensils and they used it for their own glory and for their own service. Bad things happen. Why? Because whenever you uh, give, uh, uh, ordain something for God, a guitar, or a piano, or drums, uh, whatever may be a church, you know, whatever may be, you ordain it, you bless it, you anoint it, you give it to God, it should be only used to bring praise and worship and glory to God. That's so important. You know, so be, before I leave, I want to I pray for you. You know, if, if you're far from God, you're far from the Lord and you're going to church, but there's an emptiness that is there. You don't have any more passion for God. Uh, it's been a while since you you really let loose in church. You know, if you're at a place at a church that doesn't allow you to worship, that doesn't allow you to pray, there's no more altar time. You know, you need to look for a church that has that. You need to look for a church that is a, a worshiping church, a praying church, a church of altar. We need to get back to that. That's so important. If you're if you're that type of person and you need you know you, you've been looking for God you know there's still time for you to come back to God get ready you know the rapture is gonna happen and it's gonna it's gonna take place it's in the Word of God if it's in the Word of God guess what it's gonna happen you need to be ready we, you and I need to be ready for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and if you say right now uh, 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 brother pastor I, I I'm not ready I know if he would come I wouldn't make it this is a good opportunity for you to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ if you've never given your life to Jesus this is a but at this moment I also want to pray for the sick if uh, you've been having problems in your body uh, maybe you know somebody that is that is sick right now and and uh, you want to stand in, uh, uh, stand in their place and, and receive that miracle uh, I want you to do that right now so I want to pray father I just come before you in the name of Jesus and I pray for every person that is listening to me right now. Those that are sick, those that come with trouble and finances, Father, whatever it may be, uh, the nerves and the stress and all these things, Father, I pray for that person right now in the name of Jesus that has been having trouble with headaches and migraines, Father. I pray right now for their healing right now in the name of Jesus. I pray right now for that person that has been uh, dealing and having trouble with their kidneys, Father. I pray for a healing in the name of Jesus. Your word says that by your son's stripes that we are already healed. I pray for that person right now that's been having trouble in their lungs, that's been having trouble breathing, Father. I pray for them to be healed right now in the name of Jesus. Father, for there is nothing impossible for you. I break the dominion of darkness right now. I break every disease and sickness in the name of Jesus. Every name under the name of Jesus has to kneel, has to bow, because there is no other name but the name of Jesus. And Father, I thank you that you hear me. I thank you, Lord, that you will accomplish what we ask you to do. And we don't come in our own name, but in the name of your precious Son, Jesus Christ. And Father, we thank you in Jesus' name.